Ever thought of dipping your head in a bowl of liquid nitrogen? Well, it's not a great idea, but let's explore why. You see, liquid nitrogen is a cryogenic fluid, which is a fancy way of saying it's really, really cold. We're talking negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 195 degrees Celsius cold. So cold, in fact, that it makes normal ice look like a hot summer day. Now, human flesh doesn't exactly play well with extreme temperatures, especially not the ones as low as liquid nitrogen. It would cause instant frostbite, and the water in your cells would freeze, expanding and rupturing the cells. The result? Well, let's just say you'd have a face only a mother could love, if she was a fan of horror movies. But here's a fun fact, you might not feel the cold immediately. This is due to something called the Leiden frost effect. When a liquid comes into contact with a mass significantly hotter than its boiling point, it creates an insulating vapor layer that slows down the heat transfer. Thus, your skin wouldn't freeze instantly. But don't be fooled, this is a temporary grace period and it won't take long before the cold sets in. Now speaking of cold, let's talk about cryogenics, the study of materials at very low temperatures. Cryogenics is often associated with the idea of freezing humans for future revival. While it's a fascinating concept, science hasn't quite figured out how to successfully thaw out frozen humans yet, so I wouldn't recommend trying to become a DIY cryogenics experiment. And if you're thinking about those stories of people surviving extreme cold like the monks who can meditate in the snow, or the guy who swam in the North Pole, remember they didn't do it by plunging their heads into a vat of liquid nitrogen. So, unless you're after a permanent freeze frame of your horrified expression, I'd suggest skipping the liquid nitrogen facial. Next up, we're sticking our heads into a volcano, metaphorically speaking, of course. Now let's talk lava, that molten hot fiery goo that's so fascinating to watch from a safe distance. It's like nature's very own fireworks display. But what if, for some unfathomable reason, you decided to dunk your head into it? Well, let's explore that thought, shall we? Lava is incredibly hot, with temperatures ranging from 1600 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt your face mask and, well, your face in less than a blink of an eye. And that's not even the worst part. Here's a surprising fact. Lava is three times denser than water. This means you wouldn't just sink into it like some fiery hot tub. Instead, you'd float on the surface, bobbing around like a cork on a molten sea, while your head, neck, and possibly your shoulders are being incinerated. And here's another fun tidbit. Lava is so hot, it would boil the water in your body before it even touches your skin. So, you'd essentially be steamed from the inside out. Talk about a bad hair day, right? Now I know what you're thinking. Surely, I'd pass out from the heat before I felt any pain. Well, not quite. The heat from the lava would cause a rapid expansion of air in your lungs, leading to a rather explosive finale. But hey, look on the bright side, if you ever found yourself in this situation, you could potentially set a new world record for the fastest human torch. And that's something, right? But all jokes aside, let's be real. Interacting with lava is not just dangerous, it's deadly. It's a force of nature that deserves our respect and a healthy dose of caution. So, unless you fancy becoming a human torch, let's agree to keep our heads out of volcanoes, shall we? Now, who's up for a quick trip inside a nuclear reactor? Don't all rush at once. Ah, the allure of the nuclear reactor. A place where atoms playfully split and dance in a dazzling display of energy. But what would happen if you decided to stick your head in there for a peek? Well, let's start with a little bit about radiation. It's all around us, from the sun's rays to the humble banana. Yes, you heard right, even bananas emit a tiny amount of radiation due to the presence of a certain isotope of potassium. But, before you start panic peeling, know that you'd have to eat roughly 70 million bananas in one sitting to experience any harm. Now, imagine the radiation inside a nuclear reactor. It's like comparing a leisurely stroll in the park to running a marathon while juggling flaming swords. The radiation levels are so high they can cause immediate harm, from nausea to hair loss, and even, let's say, a swift departure from this mortal coil. So, if you were to stick your head into a nuclear reactor, you would be exposed to an astronomical amount of radiation. This wouldn't just give you a bad hair day, your cells would start to break down and let's just say, you'd be in for a rather unpleasant experience. If you want to get technical, you'd be subject to a phenomenon known as radiation sickness. This isn't the kind of sickness where you call into work and enjoy a day off with chicken soup and Netflix. No, this is the kind where doctors in hazmat suits become your new best friends. So. While the prospect of peeking inside a nuclear reactor might seem like an exciting adventure, 
Unless you have a particular fondness for glowing in the dark and extreme hair loss, it's probably best to stick to safer pursuits. So, the nuclear reactor tour is cancelled, unless you're eager to glow in the dark for all the wrong reasons. Fancy a buzz? How about sticking your head in an electric substation? Now before you start considering this as your next adrenaline rush, let's talk about what would actually happen. Electricity is a powerful force, and substations are packed with high voltage currents that can be lethal to the human body. Just to give you an idea, a single spark of static electricity, the kind you might feel after walking on a carpet, is about 3,000 volts. Now imagine the power coursing through a substation, we're talking about millions of volts. This could result in instant electrocution and, well, let's just say your hair would be the least of your worries. Here's a shocking fact for you. Lightning, which is also electricity, can reach temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. Now picture that kind of energy flowing through your body. Not a pretty sight, right? So, unless you're auditioning for the role of a human lightning rod, it's best to keep your head out of substations. And now for our final act, let's consider roasting. Our heads. In an oven. Now, while it might sound absolutely outrageous, it does raise an interesting question. What exactly would happen if we subjected our heads to the heat of an oven? Picture this, you're not a turkey, you're not a loaf of bread. You're a human being and our bodies are not designed to withstand extreme temperatures. The human body can endure up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit before heat stroke sets in. Now imagine the temperature of a preheated oven, which is typically around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's more than three times the heat our bodies can handle. The result? Well, let's just say it's not pretty. We're talking about severe burns, dehydration, and potentially heat stroke. The heat would literally cook the proteins in our skin, leading to a condition known as thermal burns. So unless you're keen on a crispy, well-done look, I'd suggest leaving the roasting to the turkeys. Well, that was a heady journey through some rather unusual places. Let's take a moment to recap. We started with the chilling experience of a liquid nitrogen head dip. The takeaway? Let's just say it's a surefire way to get a bad case of brain freeze. But hey, on the plus side, you'd never have to worry about a bad hair day again. Next, we plunged headfirst into a lava pool. Spoiler alert, it's not a spa treatment I would recommend. It's a bit too hot to handle and the hair singe is far from pleasant. Then we took a trip to the heart of a nuclear reactor. We discovered that your head might not exactly glow in the dark afterward, but the radiation would make for a rather, let's say, electrifying experience. Speaking of electrifying, we then charged into an electric substation. The result? A shocking revelation that this is not the best place to get your daily dose of energy. Finally, we roasted our heads in an oven. While it might sound like a great way to warm up on a cold day, trust me, it's not the kind of toasty you're looking for. Now don't forget, these are all hypothetical scenarios. I'm sure you're smart enough to know that these are not places to literally put your head, but isn't it fun to let our imaginations run wild and learn some bizarre science along the way? If you've enjoyed this journey as much as I have, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you want to keep exploring the weird and wonderful with me, don't forget to subscribe. Got a favorite part of today's adventure? Or perhaps an idea for a new place to put our heads? Drop a comment below. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Remember, it's all fun and games until someone loses a head. Stay safe, stay curious, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.